in this session uh, we are going to recap all the things we have learned in previous sessions so we have learned about installation of dev c++ and how to execute hello world program then we learn keywords data types identifiers variables constant operators and expressions and then we learn how to read user input using scanf then uh, we learn about control statements like if, if, else, nested if, switch. And then we learn about loops like while loop, do while loop, for loop, and nested loops. Then uh, we have learned about uh, arrays and 2D arrays and the structures, nested structures and array of structures and type def. Then uh, functions and uh pointers so this thing ha we have covered so today i'm going to uh, recap everything so let's see how to how we have uh, conduct those things and you can clarify if you have anything missed from uh, previous session so first thing is how to install Dev C++ and execute Hello World program. First, we need to download Dev C++ application from the SourceForge.net website. So you can see here we first search download Dev C++ in Google search bar. Then we can see first link and we open that website. So you can see here download button. Uh, in green color so we can click on this button to download dev c++ application then we install that application so when you open this application you can use this new button new file or new source file button to create new file then we type here uh, c code so first thing you need to include the header file std io.h header file to indicate input and output of the C program so then we use main method so inside main method you can give any statement to print so we use printf function to print hello world string so here you can see another thing is main method can be have uh, void type and int type if it is int type you need to return some value like zero so after you uh, type this c code then you need to save it as hello world c so you need to use dot c extension then after that you can click on this run and execute button to execute the program called hello world Then we have learned about keywords, data type and other things. So here you can see uh, keywords. So keywords are already defined in C programming language in order to do some uh, specific uh, process or specific task inside the C programming language. So you can see there are a lot of keywords available in C programming language. Then we use data types. So you can see here category, four category of data types. So we have learned basic data types called like uh, int, char, float, and double. And then we have learned pointers, array, and structure. Those are derived data types. So we have covered those things in our previous sessions. Then we need to uh, cover this section so so we have used modifier and we can change the value range of each data type so you can see if we consider in data type the memory allocation for that data type is 4 bytes so if we use some short in or long in then we can change the memory allocation values so if we consider the numbers or values 
there are some range so you can see how the lowest and highest value can be saved if we specify these uh, data types so you can see the format specifier so you can use this format specifier for scan f and print f functions to read data and print data then we learn about identifier so you can see here uh, there are some rules uh, consisting this regarding this uh, identifier so you cannot start in, start from the numbers and special characters so we cannot use space and some hyphens like this so you need to be aware of these rules in order to create some identifiers so here you can see there are some special characters can be used for the identifier like underscore and if we consider pointers we need to use asterisk mark and if we use in some memory address we need to use and sign so rather than those values you can cannot use you cannot use uh, other special characters so those things you need to know when you're defining some identifier so there are two types of identifier one is variables and other one is constants so if we consider variables where variable is an identifier that denotes a stored location used to store a data value so we use those variable to store data values so this is how we declare those uh, variable so we need to specify the data type and we give some space and we call the or we define the variable name so normally this variable name is an identifier so you can see example here int space and identifier name and we give the semicolon so this is variable declaration if we consider the variable initialization after we declare a variable we can assign some value to into that uh, variable so uh, we need to use this syntax so we give variable name and we uh, use assign operator and we give here value with uh, with ending uh, semicolon here you can see the example we have defined a variable for count then we can initialize that count variable using value 0 so next thing is uh, constant so if we uh, use constant we cannot change the value of that uh, variable during the execution of the program so we use two separate ways to uh, define constants here you can see uh, we can use const keyword and with space you can give here data type and space and you can give constant variable name then uh, assign operator with some value so you must give the value for define constant here and also you can see uh, we can uh, define a constant uh, before we go to the main method uh, as a header statement so you can give hash define and variable name and uh, value so these are the operators we have learned so there are arithmetic operators and relation operators and logical operators so you can refer the previous video session to uh, know much uh, more details how to use these uh, operators and the expression so the expression is an legal any legal combination of symbols that represent a value so you can see here variable plus and five is an expression so in here you can consider the order of precedence precedence means uh, how we evaluate this expressions in order to get the result so uh, that can be changed uh, if we 
you in different uh, order of operators so you can see here order of pre uh, precedence based on the operation so a parenthesis will be considered as the first thing when you are uh, including some expression so it will consider the uh, parenthesis and do some operation inside this parenthesis first then come to the next thing so this is the order uh, of uh, executing those expressions then we have learned about uh, scanf function so this function can be used to read an input from the command line so we first uh, define some variable then we need to add some value into that variable using scanf function in that case we call the memory location of that variable then we assign a value so in here you can see we need to specify the formatting specifier based on the web memory uh, or based on the uh, type of the uh, data type of the variable so if it is an integer then you need to give formatting specifier for indicate uh, integer value then we have learned about control statements so here you can see if condition so if condition will take some input and check the condition and if it is for the then it will end the uh, program otherwise if it is true then it will print the output so you can see here the syntax so if is the keyword uh, and uh, we use condition within parentheses after that we use open bracket and close bracket within those two brackets we can give the statements that should uh, give the output if the condition is true here you can see uh, if else so if this is true then it will print output one which mean it will execute first uh, section of this in this section uh, syntax if it is false you can give some else part to output some another statements so if this condition is false then it will come to the else part and execute these statements next thing is uh, nested if so you can see here uh, we can keep if within if condition so if this condition is true then only come to this condition otherwise it will false and end the program so in this case actually you can use this false also another output so if and else can be used inside another if and else so that will be taken as a nested if next thing is switch switch can be used to uh, check each cases regarding one particular expression variable so if we give some input it will check the first case if it is true then it will execute first statement in this syntax you can see here first we use switch keyword within bracket we give some variable as a expression so inside the open and uh, close curve bracket you can see we first consider the case and we can give here case keyword and we give here label as a some value that can be have for this particular uh, variable so this variable may have this labels if it is true which means uh, if for an example if we give as n variable which is integer type and the case we can take as 0 1 2 like that if this n is equal to 0 then it will print the first statements then you should do that break because uh, if this statement uh, executed and after that it will consider the next case so it is better to give break to end the uh, program 
so here all thing can be false then we need to use default statement to print then we come to the while loop so here you can see uh, first we give some input and it will check the condition if it is true then it will give some output and go back into this first place and give some input into the condition but sometimes this uh, given input is may differ from the previous input sometimes it can be same value the thing is uh, we just give some uh, value and check the condition if it is false then it will end the loop so this is the syntax we need to use keyword while and within the brackets you can give some condition and open and curve bracket can be used for uh, iterate some process okay so you can refer the previous video session for some more examples so then then you can uh, uh, clearly get understand how to use these loops so this is how we define do while loop so first we do something then we check the condition remember that you need to specify the semicolon at the end of this while loop so uh, that is very important so here we give some input and it will do some process then we can consider the condition if it is true then come to here and then again do some process and again check the condition if it is false then we end the loop so likewise you can consider this for loop so this is the exam uh, syntax so you can see here uh, initial expression boolean expression and increment expression can be used to define this for loop so you can give some control variable and you can check the condition and you can increase that uh, control variable uh, in each iteration so you can refer the examples in previous video session then you can understand how to uh, do this for loop so this is the nested loop so this is same as uh, same concept we are using so as a while uh, sorry uh, if else nested so here you can see uh, we uh, use some for loop inside another for loop similarly you can use the uh, while loop as well so while loop inside the while loop can be used as a nested loop so next thing is arrays and 2d arrays so first thing we have learned arrays so you can see here we use same data type of elements or values to store the uh, store inside uh, inside memory so here you can see the definition and array is a homogeneous collection of elements which is uh, uh, which is means which means that uh, uh, same type of elements organized into contiguous memory regions contiguous memory regions means adjacent memory location so this is the syntax of array not 2d array so we can give uh, data type and identifier and the size of the array if it is 2d array you need to give uh, number of rows and number of columns okay So this is how we initialize the array so in here you can see declaration and initialization can be done in one single line so this array is a integer type array which consists in 10 integer numbers so we need to give size as a 10 then we assign values like this so you need to use curve bracket so that uh, you can uh, uh, use some integer value by separating you can give each value into this array so this is how we access those uh, array values so we call this array name and we indicate the index number inside the 
square bracket then we can print the value so this is integer type uh, value so when we printing we need to use format specifier for integer value so this is one example how we use for loop for access or print those values so we can control index number which is starting from zero first index number can be start from zero and come up to nine so index number can be increased one by one zero one two likewise so we can use for loop to indicate that index number as a control variable then we can print each values using this print statement so you can call the print uh, this array name and within square bracket you can change the variable value index from 0 to 9 so this is how we print this array the next thing is how to use string so string means array of characters so you can see here Nimal is a array of characters which consisting four character values so we save those four sorry uh, five characters inside this uh, first name array which is which has five uh, as a array size and uh, we can print those, uh, those two arrays using formatting specifier as a S. So we consider this S and we print uh, these two strings in here. So next thing is 2D array. So you can see the how 2D arrays are consisting inside the memory location. So there are row number and column number we can call row index number and column index number starting from 0 and come to the uh, size minus 1 uh, index number which is here uh, 3 so 0 1 2 3 likewise you can consider each index numbers so this is how we assign some value into that 2d array so you can call uh, uh, row index number and column index number then we assign some value into this uh, memory slot so rather than using manually like this you can create nested for loop for insert uh, values into each memory location so you can call here first index number for the r and second index number for c so you can call uh, those index number using two for loops. Next thing is structures and nested structure and array of structure. So you can see how we uh, define how we consider this structure. So a structure in C is a collection of items of different types. So if we consider student structure, it can be have. Uh, we can have this name as a character of array and h as an integer type uh, gp as a double type so there are different types so these are called as members in student structure so simply you can group various built-in data types so you can group few built-in data types into a structure this is how we define structure this is syntax so we need to use struct keyword and structure name and inside the curve bracket we can give the members so this is how we struct we use structure variable so uh, struct student can have three members name age and gpa so you can use different type uh, data types here and uh, we can create a structure variable called student1 and student2 like this so you need to use struct keyword and student structure name then you can define the structure variable rather than using these separate things you can do it in a single way so so you can see here struct keyword and a student structure 
so we give the members and here you can see we create two structure variables student 1 and student 2 next thing is accessing structure members so this is how we uh, access structure members so you need to use structure variable dot then you can use member variable member variables means uh, name age and gpa so structure variable can be student one student two so you can see the example here we first we create a student structure after that we can create student one structure variable so if we need to insert some value into name member so we can call the first uh, first call this student one structure variable then we use dot operator and we indicate here member name uh, comma and we can give some value so here we can use string copy function to insert string into a, a character uh, array of characters type uh, variable so then uh, we can print it using formatting specifier as is next thing is nested structure so you can see here one structure has another structure as a member variable so here uh, we can use an example address another structure address is another structure so we can create a structure inside the structure and we can create a structure variable like addr so this structure can be uh, placed outside the structure student structure and inside this student structure you can define a structure variable struct address addr so likewise you can uh, define structure within a structure so that is we call as nested structure next thing how we access to the nested structures member so first we call the student structure variable s1 then we come to the uh, next structure variable called adr then inside that structure we can have members address line 1 and address line 2 so then we can insert value into those two members so this is how we uh, call or access nested structures members next thing is array of structure so this is uh, how we define uh, array of structure so we just create array of structure variable like this by indicating array size okay so if we consider if we need to uh, have five students details like this we can create student structure variable array of var uh, structure variable using like this struct student and we can give some array name here stdo student and we can give the array size so in this way you can create array of structure variable so this is a uh, student structure and we can create array of uh, structure like this and we can use for loop to access uh, for that uh, array so you can call student within bracket you can use control variable i dot and member a variable name so likewise you can uh, use for loop so you can refer the previous video session to uh, get more detail about this example so another thing is type diff see programming language co contains uh, the type diff keyword to allow users to provide alternative name for the primitive data types so we create some alternative primitive data types here for an example if we consider student structure we can use type diff keyword here if we consider this type diff keyword we should give 
वेरिएबल नेम वी कैन डिफाइन अ वेरिएबल नेम फॉर स्टूडेंट स्ट्रक्चर लाइक एस टी डी सो इन साइड द मेन मेथड वेन वी आर क्रिएटिंग स्टूडेंट स्ट्रक्चर वेरिएबल्स वी डू नॉट नीड टू गिव स्ट्रक स्टूडेंट पार्ट वी जस्ट गिव द डिफाइंड डेटा टाइप डिफाइन टाइप डेफ वैल्यू हियर सो एस टी डी एस लाइक प्री डिफाइन डेटा टाइप सो यू कैन यूज दिस एस टी डी टू क्रिएट स्ट्रक्चर वेरिएबल्स नेक्स्ट थिंग इज फंक्शन so a function is a module or block of program code which deal with a particular task making function is a way of isolating one block of code from other independent blocks of code so in here we can consider this function as a block of code which means we can uh, separate few uh, lines of code and we can keep those codes inside a function and we can repeat the uh, these few lines again and again by calling this function so this is how we define a function so normally hello world printf uh, can be considered inside the main method but here we are going to create demo function by separating that printf function outside the main method so we can create demo void type function which consists in printf hello world statement then we call that demo function inside the main method if we execute this program it will consider first main method so when we come to the main method uh, it will consider the demo function so then it will execute this demo function so then you can have printf hello world statement in your output so this is the uh, things that should include in function definition so you can see here return type so that can be void or any other data type so if we using void type which means it will not return anything it will print a print some message or print uh, do some operations but it doesn't return anything uh, and the function name and the optional parameters and the function body so you can see here uh, this example hello world string can be considered uh, consist inside this hello variable uh, character of array so we pass this hello into this demo function so this demo function consisting optional parameter called message this array will take this hello uh, array uh, value so it will take this value into this message then it will print or it will do some operation inside this function body so it will uh, consider this printf message means it will print this hello world in this uh, using this printf function next thing is function declaration declaration can be done like this so you can just give the uh, type return type and function name and what are the uh, parameters and we do not give any body we just end up with semicolon so these are the two type of function declaration you can create function prototype or function signature if we consider function signature we do not give any variable name if we consider function prototype we can give some variable name like this sometimes like demo function uh, you do not need to give any uh, parameters we can keep it as keep it, it as a empty parenthesis and uh, next thing is global variable and local variable so you can see there are two variables sum and i so sum is defined and initialized outside all the methods so then we can use this sum in uh, 
anywhere of this program. But if we consider i, i is defined inside the function. So you can see here uh, we can uh, use i inside this get summation function. We cannot use this i outside the function. We just use this i inside the function. That is why we call it as local variable. Then next thing is formal parameters and actual parameters. If we consider actual parameters, that means we take some value, actual values into x and y and we keep those x and y uh, when we uh, using this function. So that is why we call it as actual parameters. But here you can see max function which consists in some optional parameters. So this parameter can have any values. So we just did function, uh, de, uh, sorry, uh, define the variable, but we do not initialize those variables using any values. That is why we call these things as a formal parameters. So next thing is pointers. So pointers in C programming language. So pointers are used in C program to access the memory and manipulate the address. So we just directly access into memory and manipulate the values though inside those memory locations. So this is how we uh, uh, declare a pointer variable. So as normal variable, we use data type and the pointer variable name. Additionally, we just give the asterisk mark like this. So for an example, you can see here, we declare a pointer uh, using data type and space and asterisk mark and pointer variable name. So this asterisk called as a dereference operator. So there are two ways of defining pointer variable. So this is how we take uh, pointer variable. So you can see here if we consider this in C is equal to 22 statement, C is equal to 22, which means it considering value and the address. Value can be 22, but address can be random memory location. So for an uh, example, as we can assume this number. So we take this memory address, we assign that memory address into a pointer called PTR. So we do not give here a strict mark. We just take that uh, pointer variable name and assign the memory address. If we uh, use this uh, dereference operator with this pointer variable name, then we can have the value inside that memory location which is 22. So this is the example that I have used in the previous lab session. So you can see here uh, a is equal to 3, b is equal to 4. So we take the memory locations and assign those memory locations into PTR1 and PTR2. And you can uh, run this program and you can check address so when we printing memory location address, you can use percentage P O percentage U percentage use U use for uh, unsigned uh, integer. So actually you can use both thing, but the percentage P is the uh, formal uh, formatting specifier for pointers. So you can take the uh, address by calling PTR1, uh, you can take the value by calling the reference operator with that PTR1 variable name. So this will give the variable name, but this will give the memory address. So we can use this uh, addition by calling directly this uh, memory location. So we take the memory location by calling or oh, consist in this asterisk or the reference operator, we can take the value of that memory location and add with other value inside uh, next uh, other memory location. 
so after that you can take the addition of these two values so this is what will happen if we use pass by reference operator so there are two things uh, when we consisting uh, function pass by value or pass by reference if we consider pass by value that is the thing we have learned in the functions but in here we can uh, get this memory location memory address and we just pass the memory address into the uh, function this function will take the value inside those memory location so p1 will take the memory address of a and p2 will take the memory address of b then we call here asterisk with p1 and asterisk with p2 which consisting the p1 is 3 and p2 is 4 so this is how we use pass by reference next thing is pointer in array so contiguous memory regions means it is uh, the adjacent memory location which means each memory address has uh, adjacent values if we consider the array uh, first value uh, memory location as thousand then the next uh, memory location address will be thousand one likewise it is adjacent memory address values so you can just you can start with just calling this first memory location if you need to access into this array so then you can take the value in first memory location and just uh, increase the value into next memory location uh, then you can take this second value so here you can see if we assign a pointer we just give the array name so array name is equal to the first value uh, or first index number value memory location okay in by default so if we consider this one so ptr is a thousand which is the first memory location address ptr plus one is a thousand one which is the second memory location so if we consider asterisk or dereference operator we can take the value so we can use parentheses and we can consisting this asterisk mark outside the parentheses then you can call this memory location and you can take the value so you can see here there are uh, some loop or we can use some loop so 0 1 2 3 like that so inside the for loop you can consider uh, like this so we print the value and time to time we increase the uh, pointer value uh, by one so we increase the pointer value by one then we print the uh, uh, value inside that memory location uh, by using this dereference operator with the pointer variable name but here we increase one by one so we can just use uh, control variable i so here you can see within inside the parenthesis we can give the i and uh, outside the parenthesis you can use the reference operator to print each value inside each memory locations so these are the things we have learned in previous lab sessions so you can refer all the videos and uh, if you have any uh, doubts you can uh, ask from me so thank you for watching this session so i will stop Thank you.